Thank you so much, choir, for the beautiful intro. Good morning, everybody. Aloha, talofa. Welcome to our worship uh, this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Sam Nam. I serve as the senior pastor of our beautiful congregation. Whether you are joining us in person or on the live stream, we welcome all of you. I'd like to open us up in prayer. So would you bow your heads with me? Let us pray together. Thank you so much, Lord, for blessing our church, that in your presence we gather to celebrate and to lift up the name of the resurrected Christ. We ask you now that you would be among us, that we, uh, people of the resurrection, we would celebrate new life in Jesus, and we would allow uh, just like the Samoan choir sang, we would allow and permit, O oh Holy Spirit, to flow freely through us. So breathe new life, breathe your spirit and your wind through this place this day. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. If you are able, please stand and join me this morning to the call to worship. With great rejoicing, we come to the house of the Lord today. God is our refuge and our stronghold. The power and love of God flow through this gathering. We place our whole trust in God's mighty compassion for us. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us celebrate the presence of God here in this place and in all our lives. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, Then 
seated. This morning's scripture comes from Luke 13, verses 10 to 17. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, you hypocrites, each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? This shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he did. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Romano, for the reading of the scripture. I'd like to begin by uh, introducing two friends who are visiting us for the first time this morning. Uh, is it Mila and Esther? Mila and Esther? Um, so welcome. Welcome to our church. You are welcome here to worship with us. On that note, may we all rise to our feet and share expressions of Christ's peace either a fist bump, a handshake, a hug, or from a distance, throwing the shaka, waving the bulletin. Let's do that right now, shall we? Let's pass the peace of Jesus with one another. Amen. I feel it. Now is about the time where I say awkwardly, please stop being kind to each other. <laughs> of course, that phrase taken out of context. Oh, did you hear what the pastor said last Sunday? Um, As we're adjusting to our new 10 a.m. worship time slot, there, inevitably there's hiccups. One of the hiccups for me personally this morning was I forgot to power my iPad. So it was on zero batteries. Thank goodness for uh, old-fashioned old printer paper. And so uh, my wife mentioned this, that 
when was the last time you printed out your sermon? I, I couldn't remember. Uh, ever since I had an iPad, I would always use the iPad, but now uh, here I am relying again on old but trustworthy technology. I don't watch it anymore, but there is a sketch comedy show popular on TV known as Saturday Night Live, SNL. And in the early 2000s, uh, which I enjoyed immensely, there was this one sketch in particular that every time it came on, it, I would be howling in laughter. The sketch was called Debbie Downer. Do you remember that, those of you who are SNL fans? Debbie Downer, it was a show, it was a, a, a lady named Debbie who would always show up at inopportune times because it was a celebration, it was a moment of joy, but she would show up on the scene amongst her friends and always be so pessimistic, hence her nickname, Debbie Downer. And recently, I don't know what it was with the YouTube algorithms, but um, a recommended video came up, and it was a, a, a recent version of Debbie Downer during coronavirus, during the pandemic. And so she comes on the scene, it's a wedding reception, everyone's having a jolly good time, everyone's celebrating because it's a wedding, and here she comes in with a World War II style gas mask, <laughs> forget N95, and from the get-go she is so glass half empty. I mean, what a way to quench the, the, the party and the atmosphere. And eventually, those seated at her table, they're doing everything in their power to get her away because they try to spin the conversation towards something good and positive and happy. And then here she is, and inevitably, she's got negative statistics or a, an anecdote, and she's always bringing the mood down and sour. Now, we don't know his name from this story, but if I were to wager any money... I would say that the synagogue ruler in today's gospel account was that village's version of Debbie Downer, somebody who refused to see the good in what had just occurred miraculously in worship that afternoon. What I want to do for us is I want to reread uh, verses 10 through 14, the beginning, but let me do it this way. Uh, just to kind of help us capture how tragic yet comedic this synagogue ruler's reaction is. I'm going to bust out my trusty old The Jesus Book translation, which is Pigeon. And let me read verses 10 through 14 to capture it in context. The subtitle for this heading is Jesus Make One Wahine Come Good. One rest day, Jesus stayed teaching inside one Jewish church. One wahina stayed there that no can walk good. One bad kind spirit went make her to Ladat 18 years before. She was bent over and no can stand up straight. Jesus spoke her and tell, tell her, Sister, I make you come good from all your sick. Then he went put his hands on top of her and right then and there, she went stand up straight and tell how awesome God stay. This is the important part. The main leader guy for the Jewish church when come hoo-hoo, because Jesus went make her come good on the rest day. So he tell all the people, get six days for work. So come, let him make you come good on them days, not on the rest day. Do you see what I, I'm getting at when I say that he is their version of Debbie Downer? They are here in the midst of a worship service, celebrating, celebrating a miraculous sign that Jesus would touch a crippled woman who was hunched over for 18 years. That's a lifetime. And one spoken word from Jesus, and this woman is healed. Immediately her spine straightens up, and her first actions are one of praise and worship. She praises the Lord and sh shouts out, how awesome God is. And the audacity of the synagogue ruler to say, hey, there are six days of the week to work? 
come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. I was trying to think of um, a modern day equivalent of why this man, this synagogue ruler, would be so unable to see the beauty of Jesus healing this woman. And it's not like this person is coming into a modern day church service and saying, excuse me, um, I need to do my taxes, so can I get my year-end giving report? Like right in the middle of my sermon, right? Something like that would be, hmm, bad timing. It's important, but not right now. There are other days of the week where you can come and get your giving report. Today is a day to worship God, right? So if someone were to come and interrupt in that fashion, we would all say, hmm, timing bad. Come back another day. But no, this woman was clearly in dire need of a touch from God. So clearly you could see from the reaction of the synagogue ruler that he wasn't pleased with this miracle. He wasn't amazed. He was not rejoicing and praising God alongside the other synagogue worshipers that day. I I mentioned last Sunday that Minnie and I pray for our children every night. And what do we pray for? Well, among other things, we pray that the formation of their heart and character, that all three of our children will grow up to be bold and courageous and brave, that they would always stand up for what is right. They would always stand up for what is true. Uh, We want our kids to grow up to advocate for the weak and the voiceless. We want them to fight for those who are powerless. If there was an instance of let's say, a crippled person in the the midst, we want our children to grow up to fight for them, to pray for them, to stand up for them, just like the heart of Jesus. But we also pray for things like mercy and kindness and compassion to fill their hearts, That, um, that they would not be cold and callous to the needs of this world. Luke 13, verse 10 says that this miraculous incident that the synagogue ruler was not pleased by or impressed by, it occurred in the midst of Jesus' mid-sermon, mid-teaching. In the middle of his teaching, Jesus spots a woman in the audience and stops what he is teaching. What is he teaching? What's his scripture passage? What's his sermon title? We don't know that. Those aren't important details. But in my own imagination, I would imagination, I would like to think that Jesus is teaching on a topic like proclaiming the mercies of God. I would like to think that Jesus is like what Pastor Joe often does for us when he gets up here and he says, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I would like to think that Jesus is the one leading the people that day and saying, God is worthy of our praise. God is awesome. God is kind and compassion, compassionate. Our Father in heaven is so full of love and grace and kindness, always ready and willing to shower upon you his goodness and grace. And in the middle of Jesus saying these words, out of the corner of his eye, Jesus spots the woman hunched over in obvious discomfort and pain probably seated at the far back of the synagogue because she doesn't want to draw attention to herself. And Jesus is the one who stands up, gets out of his pulpit, goes over to her, daughter, be healed, lays hands on her, and instantly she stands up straight, healed, proclaiming the greatness of God, worshiping the Almighty. We see in this miracle that Jesus not only preaches and teaches about the goodness of God, Jesus shows it through this miraculous sign. Listen here, sister. In that sense, the Jesus book gets it right. Sister, God can make you well. God can make you whole. And so, going back to the ruler, I don't get it. 
I don't understand why the synagogue ruler is so indignant in his response. I don't understand why he's acting like that, like a Debbie Downer, when the opposite should be happening. In fact, if I'm the synagogue ruler, what I'm thinking is, Jesus, what's your schedule like next week? (laughs) Can you come back and preach and teach next week, please? In fact, Jesus, can I have you on the calendar for the foreseeable future? Can you always come back? Because it seems like when you are here preaching about the Word of God, good things happen. My goodness. But instead of acting like that, this synagogue ruler is mad, is a downer, is somebody who cannot positively see the goodness that has just occurred. But we've seen this before. Earlier in Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 7, Jesus is at the home of Simon, the Pharisee, and this incident happens. All of a sudden, a woman of ill repute from the village comes into the house with tears streaming down her face, begins to wash the feet of Jesus, anointing his feet with perfume. And then here in Luke chapter 7, verse 39, this is what it says. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were truly a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Everybody knows that. Why would Jesus permit such an act from happening, for happening? This is a woman who is loving Jesus, worshiping him at his feet, and all the bystanders can see is she's a sinner. Fast forward to Luke 13. There was a woman who was healed by Jesus, and all the synagogue ruler can see was a crippled woman who should not be healed on the Sabbath because no work is to be done on the Sabbath. But speaking of bold and courageous, Jesus doesn't back down. Jesus calls out his hypocrisy. Verse, f- verse 15, Jesus replies, You hypocrites, all of you, each of you works on the Sabbath. Do you not untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. So isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? So Jesus sees through their hypocrisy and calls them out on it. Because everybody, quote unquote, works on the Sabbath. Jesus is essentially saying to the synagogue ruler, listen, what's more important to you? An ox or a donkey over the the needs of this crippled woman? How could you say come back on a different day to be healed? Because that's considered work. We all work. We all do something that would be considered work as it was from the rules and the regulations of the Old Testament. A woman subject to a crippling disease For 18 years, in any culture, a demeaning and debilitating illness. How could it be seen as work for the sign of God to be placed upon her? So Jesus calls him out, rightfully so. And for me, there are two takeaways that I get from Jesus, not only healing and teaching and calling out those who are hypocrites, And they're in the form of questions, and I want to end with this. My first question is, have we a similar level of boldness and courage that this woman showed to show up on the Sabbath and to be open to receive the grace and the mercies of God? This woman who was crippled approached the throne of grace, petitioned the Most High. Maybe she was praying for healing for 18 years going on and on. But on that fateful day, her requests were to be answered. Brothers and sisters, is there something that you and I are struggling with even right now? And are we so bold as to approach God in a similar fashion and with great courage and steadfastness in our prayers to not give up, but to continue to petition and pray, God, I will hold on to you until you respond. Whatever your response may be, I want to pray for this very thing.
The second question is this. Have we a similar level of kindness and compassion that Jesus showed? Especially when it comes to those in our community that we might just as soon forget about. If you think about it, this crippled woman in that village, within that synagogue, this is probably not her first day of worship. Most likely, everybody knew her name. Most likely, people grew up around her. Maybe there are some people in that audience that knew of the accident that caused her to be crippled 18 years prior. So they've known this woman for so long. Jesus comes to the village, sees her, and immediately has kindness and compassion upon her. Just to kind of bring it back home, for me, uh, personally, I was convicted of my own, this question was spurred out of my own personal observations that I held. This past week, I went to Costco in town, and uh, after shopping, Minnie and I, we had a hot dog, and we enjoyed a hot dog there at the food court. And I had noticed something that I didn't notice before, because it's been more than three years since I've eaten there, since the pandemic. But we noticed that they changed the garbage cans. Did you notice that? Next time you go to Costco Ivele, notice the, co- the garbage cans. There are these gigantic metallic red receptacles with the heavy door that opens and shuts. You've got to open it almost like it's a furnace, and um, you've got to throw your, your rubbish away. But it's designed in such a way that it reminded me immediately of camping in the mainland and campgrounds in the mainland. They have garbage cans designed like that so that bears and raccoons cannot invade your campsite. Because bears are smart. If it's just a trash can with a lid, right, they'll rip it off. Even raccoons, they'll figure it out. But with a heavy door, a heavy, a heavy door, and with the, with the trash can so deep that you can't reach your paws in if you're a bear, right, and grab food, then uh, you, you can't access the rubbish. And so I thought immediately, oh my gosh, this is just like camping. And I was like, why would they make trash cans like this? And then it dawned on me, oh my gosh, I know why. We're in Evil A. Uh, the homeless community is all around. They made the trash cans like that, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. <laughs> they made the trash cans like that so that people can't rummage through the garbage. They can't pick out half-eaten hot dogs and slushies and chicken bakes. And the, you know, you, the progression, if you, that logic, right, the reasoning is, well, if they can't reach in there, then they're not going to loiter and hang out there. And if they're not going to hang out there, then it's comfortable for um, paying customers like me. And as a, so I felt immediately convicted as a customer It's like, yeah, that's awesome. That's a solid, right? Good. Are you you tracking with me? Are you following me on that? As a customer, I was like, yes, thank you. But then on on a human level, I was thinking, well, I mean, it's convenient for me, but could there be a middle road? You know, they, they would come there. The people would come there because they're hungry. Uh, they're looking for food. Could we have some kind of middle ground where we could reach out to them in mercy and kindness? And so I, I felt convicted. So I was like, you know, I, I'm 50-50. I like it. But at the same time, I'm troubled that uh, we continue to make every effort to distance ourselves from the plight of the needy. As long as it's out of my sight, yes. And so as a, as a fellow citizen, as a human being, but even as a follower of Jesus, I felt convicted, Lord, so hence this question, Lord, have I a similar level of kindness and compassion that you would show these people? 
And if the answer to that question is not quite, then the next question is, Lord, what would it take? What would it take for me to cultivate kindness and compassion and mercy? What would it take for me to demonstrate and exude love and mercy towards those who might need it the most? Oh God, convict my heart. Oh God, convict my spirit if I'm trying to remove myself from the cries of the needy in my own community. If I see within my own community those who would be like the crippled woman of 18 years, please open my eyes. I don't want to put blinders on and only focus on my own needs and my own comfort and convenience. I want to be the kind of Christian that will say, Lord, if I can be a part of the solution, what would you have me do? Lord, if my church can be a part of the solution, what would you have us do? And I think that's all of our homework. I think that's our homework. I think that's a question that we must ask ourselves. But here's the thing, and here's the good news. Jesus shows kindness and compassion to us. That if you and I have fallen short, Jesus is ready to fill our hearts with his heart and his grace, his compassion and mercies. So that more and more, we become like Jesus to the world around us. That's my prayer. My prayer is that the people, the good people of IAEA UMC, we would continue to demonstrate what it's like for Jesus to be here in our world today. Let us pray. Lord, give us both the boldness and the courage of the crippled woman who had the guts to show up to worship that afternoon and then find healing and restoration from the hands of Jesus, but also the kindness and compassion of Jesus himself who would break off his sermon Go out, touch her, and heal her by the power of God Almighty. May we, the people of AUMC, learn what it means to be kind and compassionate, bold and courageous, ultimately faithful in our witness and how we live. Thank you, God. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
rise to our feet to sing the doxology. Should we do it a cappella? A cappella? All right, let's do it a cappella. Uh, let's do 95. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creature here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for blessing us. We have all been touched and healed by you to varying degrees. And we are witnesses of the power of Jesus in our lives. Uh, take our offerings, our tithes, and our gifts. May you use them to bring healing and a knowledge of God's loving touch and kindness and compassion to the world around us, both here in this community, but ultimately to the ends of the earth. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, please be seated. Uh, we have some very important prayers to share. So, the first prayers that I want to share are those that were written and shared um, in person today. I want to lift up a prayer for our brother Gary. Um, he continues to lift up his mom and stepdad in loving kindness and faithfulness. But I want to pray for Gary because later today, he's going to the DMV for his motorcycle road tests. So we pray um, we pray for a successful outcome and for safety for you, and you'll have a blessed time and you'll get that license. Uh, we want to pray for uh, Mel's mother-in-law, Janet. Um, her health is not in good shape, and so the family is concerned. The family seeks to pray for Janet's healing, guidance, strength, and courage. So thank you, Mel. We're going to pray for Janet today. Uh, we continue to pray for. Um, uh, we continue to pray for uh, the the various people on our prayer list, and so they are the following: Evangeline Maristella, Chisato Emos, David Juan, and Alberta. We're praying for you, Pastor Joe, Maria Paolo, and her mom Miriam Kamaka. Chris Ringling, Al Blankenship, Roger Davis, Francis Yamaki, Michelle Brown, and we pray for Celia and her family. Today we lift up Aldersgate UMC and their pastor, Pastor Emmy Cruz, in our weekly prayers. Beloved church, would you bow your heads with me and let us lift up these requests as well as those that remain unspoken are the prayers of our hearts. Let us pray together. God Almighty, we want to thank you for your loving kindness and your faithfulness. Uh, we lift up the various people 
whom he just named. Your healing, your touch, would be made so evident in their lives. Whether it is a physical infirmity, whether it is spiritual or mental, emotional in nature, we ask, O oh Jesus, for your touch. Just as surely as you healed and restored that crippled woman, Lord, may your touch restore and heal each of us. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. And we proclaim your goodness. And now we end in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. As we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, announcements? We have some Important announcements. So there are various meetings that are taking place. If you are part of any of these committees, please be mindful of them. Uh, luau night. So this month's Ohana Fellowship Night is going to be a luau this coming Saturday, August 27th from 4 to 6. So a couple things. We ask that you would RSVP. There is a QR code on this. So if you have a smartphone, just direct your camera to it. It's going to lead you to a link to register or to RSVP, or you could contact Esme at her email address provided here. We are looking for donations for the following items. Specifically, we're looking for coconuts, pineapples. Is that real pineapples? Okay, <laughs> wow. So we're looking for pineapples. Uh, limbo sticks. I'm assuming just one. How funny it would be if we've had like 40 limbo sticks there. So li a broom handle is what I'm thinking. So limbo sticks, hula hoops, lay flowers for craft time. And we're also looking for entertainers. So if you have any of these skills, the ukulele players, the dancers, the singers, anyone who would like to show off their God-given talents, please let us know. Let Gizlande know. So Giz's email address is dce at iaumc.com. She is open and ready and willing to receive not only the donations, but the talents of AUMC. So again, this Saturday is a luau night, and it's not just for Keiki. It's for the whole family. So please, everyone, sign up, come out. Let's have a good time together. Sunday Servant Opportunities. We are looking for volunteers. Last week, we shared the opportunity for Sunday School. And how awesome is this, that in less than a day, Gizland received five affirmative responses from the people of AUMC. So thank you to those of you who said, I will serve. Um, again, if more of you wish to serve in Sunday school, in fact, the more the merrier, because the more people there are, the greater the rotation will be, so that we'll have more people in our rotation. But we're also looking for the vol volunteers in the following areas. Flower arrangements, live stream tech, sound tech, etc. So if you are interested in serving, you don't have to know how to do any of these things. We will teach you. We will show you how to operate the live stream, how to do the sound tech. Um, I cannot show you how to flower arrange, but I'm sure I could find someone who could train us all. So please, if you have a heart to serve God, and uh, maybe being a liturgist is a little bit too intimidating because it requires public speaking, but you would rather do something behind the scenes, uh, these are areas of service that will be perfect for you. Contact the office or me directly. Also contact the office or Gisland if you would like to have your child participate in Keiki Camp this year. We need a head count so that we could make plans and anticipate for fall break. Uh, this last announcement is probably the most important one immediately for Sunday worship, and that is next Sunday, 
we're going to debut a new worship bulletin. Um, the structure of it all, the, the, the meat of it doesn't change, but the way it's presented will look different. So for example, um, I'm just going to share this, and the ushers will share this with all of us. Under. No longer will we ask you to write, you to write your prayers on the, the, the thin sliver of paper that's attached to your bulletin. From here on out, beginning next Sunday, prayer requests will come to you in the form of a cardstock that's, um, that's almost like a half-sized sheet of paper, and it's going to be available at the usher's desk. And you could write it. It's a much bigger platform to write on, so you'll write it. And also, welcome and other information. If you would like to be on the mailing list, if you would like more information on how to serve or get involved, um, or if you would like to meet with me and set up an appointment, all of that will be on the welcome card that's also going to be available on the usher's table. So again, next, beginning next Sunday, we're going to debut that. So please be on the lookout for um, a new and revamped bulletin. It's very exciting. It, it might be spiritually nerdy, but for me, it's very exciting. Wow, new bulletin. Let's unveil it. Uh, but trust me, I think it'll really, ultimately we're doing it so that the functions are better, that we'll have a bigger, we'll be able to write our prayer requests uh, more freely, and just overall, it's going to be a more improved experience. All right? I think that's it for announcements. Uh, if you're able, please rise to your feet and let us sing together our closing hymn. pray and receive the benediction and after shalom to you i'm going to do something different today i will stand back there for a receiving line to shake your hand to give you a fist bump a high five a hug um, i haven't done it in my two year two plus years at aumc but i figure let's start returning to normalcy one step at a time so just wanted to give you a sneak preview of that all right let us pray and receive the benediction. Uh, thank you, God, for 
the grace and the kindness you always show to us. The very definition of grace is while we are so undeserving, you still extend your hand. You touch us and heal us. You call us your own, your daughters and your sons, and you invite us to partake in your kingdom. Oh God, somehow, some way, may the good people of IAEA UMC do that very same thing to the world around us. May we be the hands and feet of Jesus. May we go forth into the world ready to extend grace and mercy and kindness and compassion to those who would need it the most. Thank you, God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship and abiding of the Holy Spirit be with us both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us sing together, Shalom to you. Shalom to you now, Shalom, my friends. May God's full mercies bless you. Christ be your shallow.